what's up guys let's continue with the type of catalyst we're going to be analyzing and studying in this course essentially they are homogeneous heterogeneous and enzymes or biocatalyst and let me go next we're not going to study that much homogeneous reactions or catalyst or enzyme reactions but let me explain you just in order for you to get the difference between homogeneous and enzymes and heterogeneous reactions. So homogeneous as the name implies, the phases are the same. Probably they are in solution or they are gas-gas. They're gas-gas or solution. There are many types. You can find acid catalysis. You know hydrogen is probably dissolving water. And I don't know, maybe you have another ion here and you will react them. And even though it's going to help you, the hydrogen is not going to be consumed. You have this one, which is very, uh, very common for the Grignard or something like that. He's a French guy, French chemist. The Grignard reactant. Uh, it's very common in organic chemistry, and it helps you a lot. It uses organometallic, which will be essentially R, which is the organic part, and Mg, maybe bromide. This is the metallic part, and you can react a lot. Look at all this. If you are into chemistry, you will probably know the Grignard reactant. And many enzymatic reactions are as well in solution. Probably your stomach is a liquid phase with liquid or solution, aqua solution. Now, the enzymes, let me give you a small overview. We're not going to see that much on that, but it's very important because it's a very trending topic right now in engineering because. This is going to start to be a little bit cheaper than the standard processes or catalysts we're using. The good thing is that they are either considered homogeneous or heterogeneous. You can find them in one phase or in multiple phase. And as such, they are usually regarded as a third, a third different separate catalyst, uh, let's say, concept. And once again, look here, the substrate, you, the active site. So you have this side, it only accepts that, let's say that shape, so probably it's used on before, it only accepts that, or you might even have this. So anything that has something like this, maybe this is your reactant A and your reactant B, something like that, they go together and then react. And the most important part that we're going to be analyzing, guys, is the heterogeneous reaction which is essentially something that evolves more than one phase, at least two phases. Uh, normally we're going to see that the catalyst is the solid one, so we have solid, and we are reacting with a material which is either in liquid or gaseous form, typical for PBR, packed bed reactor. Okay guys, so essentially you have this bed, which is solid, it's a metal, and then you got these gases, gas molecules, and react. They occur, of course, in the fluid, between the interface of the fluid solid, which is, I told you, here, solid, and the gas or fluid interface. And they are very usually limited by the mass transfer coefficient, not only into kinetics. So it's not only about reaction engineering, it's also going to be about mass transfer coefficients. So if you've seen or you've taken a mass course or mass transfer operations or separation processes before, probably you have the idea that mass transfer is always limited due to the, let's say, concentration gradients, diffusivity, and all that, all those concepts. We're going to see a little bit on that, but not study that much. That's more into mass transfer uh, operation or studies. And in here, in this course, we're going to see the basics on how they adsorb, they react, and they desorb. And some basic examples, guys. Actually, I would like you to pause the video and read it. Uh, you can find it in the mighty Wikipedia. Just go and search for heterogeneous reactions. You can find a lot of processes, very common ones. Contact process, Haber-Bosch process, Oswald process steam reforming, actually these ones are the, like the top processes you should know at least. You go to an interview and it's uh, about process engineering, please be sure they might ask you what about these processes. For example, the Haber process is for ammonium. 
and it consumes around 1% of the world's industrial uh, energy budget. So that's a lot. One out, one kilogram out of 100 kilograms is going to be used, or a kilogram, let's say, of, of mm, fuel, is going to be used in the production of ammonia. Perfect. And I think that's enough right now. You've seen the basics on homogeneous, which is one phase, enzymatic reaction, which are a kind of special topic, very trending right now, and the most classical one, which is heterogeneous reaction. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.